Hello and welcome to News Click. Uh, we have with us Professor Anu Mohammad, who has been a uh, professor of economics at Jahangirnagar University for over two decades. Th thank you very much for sparing your time and coming here uh, thank to you News Click. For uh, my first question to you is uh, about the project that you're here in Delhi for, the National Committee to Protect Oil, Gas, Mineral Resources, Power and Ports. Could you tell us what exactly are the schemes that you're looking for and what exactly are you trying to achieve with this? National Committee uh, is a new form of alliance in Bangladesh. It was established in 1998. This is sort of left party plus alliance because there are some left parties within the uh, National Committee. They have their differences on different issues, but on certain issues, on natural resources, environment and national ownership, people's ownership, people's rights. We have come to a uh, unity, united alliance. It started work in 1998 on the issue of a deal on natural gas with the US company and their project. And after it was a big blow out in a gas field and the US company was trying to escape and then it was it was just it started to mobilize people so it it a new type of activities grown up with this and we had a uh, few success like uh, stop gas export of gas uh, stop stop many bad deals government had to cancel including open pit mine in northern bangladesh and recently we are uh, in a movement very uh, that is that is getting huge public support that is on Sundarban to save Sundarban yeah. because there is a largest mangrove forest and this Sundarban is like natural uh, protection system for Bangladesh and about 50 million people in the coastal region uh, from Bangladesh and India they are dependent on Sundarban so that is our let, uh, latest uh, Campaign. The Sundarban has been a site of contention now after the Rampal uh, project was announced. So could you tell us the ramifications that you can foresee with that project in Sundarban? Sundarban, when uh, we came to know about this project in 2010. In 2010, we came to know that there is a, a government uh, initiative to establish a coal-fired power plant hmm. very near to Sundarban. Hmm. And it is 1320 megawatt power plant. Uh, the main partner is NTPC of India, National Thermal Power mm -hmm. Corporation and PDB of Bangladesh. There is a joint effort, Bangladesh India and a company was formed, Bangladesh India Friendship Company and they started evicting people from there even before environmental impact assessment and it was uh, very secret activities. Mm -hmm. But after we came to, uh, we came to know from the local people were trying to save themselves. They formed a uh, land protection committee and they, from them they contacted us and then we visited the place and found that many irregularities are there. Then we started investigating the, what coal fired power plant can affect, how that can affect and what the Sundarban, mm. the, what, the special ecosystem, what, what are the dangers for Sundarban and how it will affect uh, the total ecosystem, its uh, diversity, biodiversity and also ultimately the people. So we started investigating and uh, in 2011 we came to the conclusion that we must resist this plant because Sundarban is in many ways important for both the countries. Yeah. This is a coastal, uh, this is a uh, world heritage site this is the largest mangrove forest and this is in the coastal region it is divided between India and Bangladesh. It is a 60 percent in Bangladesh and 40 percent in India, West Bengal. So in, a, a, in a West Bengal about 5 million people dependent on Sundarban for their livelihood. In Bangladesh part about 4 million people directly dependent on Sundarban and about 50 million people from both the countries, 50 million people dependent for their lives mm -hmm. from the natural disaster, threat of national disaster. They rely on completely on Sundarban, Sundarban saves them. So in the coastal area uh, and for the total ecosystem of this region, uh, coastal region, 
this is um, obviously very important to save Chandavar. It was already affected by Farakka. Yeah. Because of Farakka barrage, the sweet water flow was disrupted. Mm -hmm. And because of that saline water, Interesting. flow of saline water increased. That affected Chandavar. Mm -hmm. So, this Rampal power plant, after coming this project, Rampal power plant, they, they, that has become a final blow for Sundarban. What we asked government that you uh, first you stop this plant and then with India have a joint plan mm -hmm. to save Sundarban from other activities, other mm -hmm. uh, adverse activities and the land grabbing, forest grabbing activities and also talk about the water flow. And this is since this is important for the both the countries, both countries should come forward mm. to save and expand this from the one. Instead, the both the government uh, have become united to destroy from the one. That's where our mobilization comes. And uh, from 2011, we started campaigning, and we there are many research work we have done, and after that we contacted different experts from home and abroad in Bangladesh, in India and in different countries to understand and to explain all these things and to find the huge type of uh, mistakes and misleading information and the lies and the fraudulent different type of arguments in the environmental impact assessment. So in two th from 2013 we had several, several type of long march and it gained a huge public support and after 2013 we started connecting Indian uh, activists and experts mm -hmm. and we have uh, we have some sort of coordination and I think it is very important not only for Sundarban but for many other areas of uh, solidarity and struggle. I'll actually quote uh, from one of the articles. I really found this line very moving. It says, uh, you wrote, um, nature is unbounded, barbed wire fences cannot stave off encroaching disaster. And this, of course, will mean disaster for both India and Bangladesh. Yes. So, because Shundarwan, as you said, is uh, artificially uh, separated, but its ecosystem is spread out over the two countries. Uh, how do you think it's important for uh, left solidarity to come out of both the countries and in the larger context of left, left solidarity in South Asia to save our environment because there seems to be a kind of solidarity with rising religious fundamentalism both in India and in Bangladesh. You yourself have you have been attacked in 2008. So how do you see that once there is this kind of corporate religious fundamentalism kind of a alliance going on? How do you see this kind of alliance as central to oppose? the alliance that will actually harm all of us. Yes, this is this is very alarming situation we are uh, living in today's world. We, uh, we must have uh, the global context. We must uh, keep in mind that the global context is also very important. After war on terror, the so-called war on terror, that, that gave, gave uh, different ruling classes of different countries ample opportunity to misguide people to militarize more and to grab for corporate profit, mm -hmm. uh, land, uh, the people's lives, people's body and also forest and environment. So for South Asia, the government, every government, Bangladesh government, Indian government, Pakistan government, all governments, most of the governments are like fighting, they are saying that we are fighting terrorists. And from themselves, they are producing, they are providing all the terrorist development, development, they are, they are, they are organizing development terrorism on the people. And they are, they are looking for justification by saying that we are fighting terrorism. So their cooperation is corporate cooperation. Yeah. And on the, on the basis of corporate cooperation, they are like uh, exploring every possibility to uh, privatize everything for corporate profit. Mm -hmm. So they do not bother about the river, they do not bother about forest, they do not bother about the land and the people's lives, livelihood, everything 
they are crazy about making profit. So, the, they, are, they are like coming one after another different type of projects. And so, religious fundamentalism and religious fascism mm. and this corporate fascism that comes together. Yeah. And everywhere in India and in Bangladesh, everywhere we are seeing that this corporate fascism what we, uh, what we know from the textbook that new liberal reforms, this corporate fascism is, is like they are soft, they, they need a soft window like for example, Hindutva or uh, patriotism or Mukti Juddha Chetana, liberation, the spirit of liberation, war, all these things they are using as rhetoric mm. and to bring a consent, manufacture mm. consent among the people mm. for themselves to rationalize their looting, plundering and destruction of nature, etc. But people's lives and livelihoods, this environment, our history, our struggle are very much connected. Mm. We, uh, we cannot in isolation, we cannot fight this, this barbarism. Mm. Uh, in South Asia, the people's lives and li uh, struggle are so much connected like environment. Environment and nature, rivers, air, nothing can be divided on the, in the in the political by the political border if bangladesh air is polluted indian air will be polluted but if bangladesh water is gone bangladesh river is affected mm -hmm. indian ultimately india will also be affected and sundarban for sundarban it is very much uh, very much evident that this sundarban is uh, if affected in bangladesh part it will affect it in indian part these friends and other things, political border, BSF and uh, BJB, they will not be able to save this Sundarban. So, we, the solidarity, our solidarity, if we, uh, if we can articulate our goals for like decent life, uh, a, a, a people's solidarity across religion, caste, class and the nationalities then we will find that we will have solidarity on the issue of fighting communalism, mm. fighting religious fascism, fighting real government uh, developmental terrorism and to find a vision for a really democratic, peaceful, environmentally sound development paradigm for South Asia. Mm. That is what we try to achieve and that is very much needed for the left in Bangladesh, left in India and left plus mm. there are other people in general to understand and to come forward to have this solidarity into a solid and very dynamic struggle. Since India is a big country mm. and Indian government is uh, like leading this South Asian corporate mm. hegemony, then people and activists and the left in India they have more responsibility mm. to materialize this solidarity mm. and if they uh, if they take more initiative i think it is it will be very easy mm. to materialize our solidarity and as people struggle in all over south asia since you brought that up let me also ask you this question uh, do you think that now we of course know that because of this kind of warmongering speech that goes around in South Asia, the actual development projects that will help the people in this region, irrespective of the countries and borders, they get cancelled. For example, as you know that the SARC summit will not be held, uh, which was supposed to be held this year because India pulled out. Uh, so, how do you think that these particular uh, decisions which are taken in the name of nationalism, in the name of working for the people actually help uh, eradicate the actual parameters of development. The, the ruling class needs uh, to keep uh, the sense of conflict alive in the people's mind. Mm. So, they create tension, they create uh, the possibility of war and this, uh, this, this war mongering uh, patriotism that helps to helps armaments builders, armaments business. Mm that helps corporate business, that helps to, to, uh, to obstruct the people's to people connection. So, we need to work for the alternative development paradigm. We have to bring uh, the alternative development model before the people. Mm -hmm. That we need 
others very badly for existence of ourselves and for development of ourselves. And the people to people connections in South Asia is crucial to find a new democratic South Asia. We really hope that we will find that yeah. new democratic South Asia. Thank you very much for joining us here.